Welcome back guys to yet another Honda Navi video. Leaving off from last week's video where we dove into the headlight cluster and changed all the light bulbs around. If you guys are new and curious about that, I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to check that video out. In this video, we'll be diving into something that I probably should have done a while ago and it shows. Um, we will be changing our shoes. And when I say shoes, I do not mean the tires or the rim. I physically mean brake shoes. A fun fact before actually purchasing these, you only have to, there's only one type of brake shoe for this bike. I have 12s both in the front and in the rear, but the hubs are the exact same diameter and they take the same type of brake shoe. So those are the code right there. You can find them on motosport.com, Revzilla, Partzilla, wherever you can find uh, OEM parts for that motorcycle. So without wasting any more of you guys this time, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Starting off in the front of the bike, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver to take off these two dust covers for your axle. Once those are taken off, it exposes your axle through bolt. The nut is always going to be, or at least it should always be, on the right side of the bike. The axle should always feed from the left to the right. Fun fact. The axle itself is a 14 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the wrench on the other side. And the other side is a 19 millimeter. It's a very, very weird size difference, but I'm not complaining. If you don't have an impact driver, just a standard ratchet, we'll just take it right off. It shouldn't be held on there too hard. Once you have that off, take your wrenches off, put the nut somewhere where you're not gonna lose it. If you haven't already done it, um, I would go ahead and put something underneath the front of the bike, underneath the kind of, I call it the belly pan. Go ahead and put something underneath it because this, this front wheel, it relies a lot. The Navi, when it's on the, the rear stand, it relies on this front wheel to be on the ground. In order to access the brake, you can't actually have the wheel on the ground. So you're gonna need to put something underneath the front so it holds this wheel kind of steady in the air. Once you get the wheel free floating in the air, you should have a little bit of drag on, I mean, Drum brakes are just like that. They have a little bit of drag. Um, even the disc brakes on my 450 and my 250 do the same thing. Um, in the mountain bike community, that's not normal, but with motorcycles and stuff like that, you know, you're never gonna be pitch perfect with it. Um, so once you have that successfully off the ground, take a hammer and you can even take a flathead screwdriver. I take a quarter inch, like 10 inch extension and go ahead and get it started. Go ahead smack this through the other side very gently it should drop through like that sometimes you might have to hit it all the way but sometimes you can get away with just pulling it out I think this is gonna be a case where I have to go ahead and finish it all the way through which won't be a big issue should just drop right out gently pull this out you have a little spacer for the right side of the wheel. Do not lose this. Do not get it extremely dirty. We will be re-greasing that when we put that back on. Go ahead and turn it around. This hub always stays attached. Not always, but when the wheel falls, it should come down. And there's this groove that sets into the side of the fork itself. Make sure that goes back on, but I'll get into that in the very near future. Go ahead, wiggle it off. And it, the whole system should separate. You might have to roll this forward. And then gently put that down and roll the tire and wheel away from the Navi. That is what the inside of your brake hub looks like. This is the outer hub. The inner hub is dangling over there. Um, there shouldn't be a lot of buildup actually because it kind of works its way out. You can see there's residue all around that ring. It's completely normal. It's supposed to do that. It's designed to do that. Uh, mine looks pretty good, so I'm not going to go ahead and clean it. Uh, it's always good to re-grease those bearings. There's, I think there's one on, on, the, on the other side as well. Um, or there's, there's one in the hub as well, too. Um, be careful when you grease this up because you don't want to get any grease on the brakes itself or they just won't work at all. Disc brakes is a little bit different because they're exposed to the elements, so the water and stuff will get the grease off over time. Still not a good thing to get grease on, on disc brakes, but with drum brakes, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So you really have to be very careful putting 
grease, especially on the axle and stuff like that, because you don't want to put too much grease on the axle and then have that translate into coming into this. Fun fact as well, this, these two little notches right here is what drives your speedometer cable. I'm gonna go ahead and bring something over here for this inner hub. Go ahead and take it by this, just to get it off the ground and everything like that. And go ahead and lay it right on. So that is what your hub looks like. These are physically your brake shoes and they don't look terrible actually, but we are sitting at 3,800 miles and I haven't swapped these yet. I don't know what the manual says, but I'm getting a lot of squeaking and stuff like that. It could just be this dust buildup, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and change them anyways, because for those of you who need to change them, I can show you how to do it. So a little lesson on how these brakes actually actuate. This is gonna be the exact same for the rear. You have your lever up here, which is attached to a cable. When you press this brake, it sucks that in. And if you notice, you have a little pivot right here. And even the slightest amount, you see how it wears? So this spring stretches with tension as you go ahead and press this. Because this turns, which forces these brakes out. And that's what rubs on the outside. So you have these two springs. This will snap and hurt your fingers very, very bad if you do this incorrectly. Um, but it's, it's very quick and very simple. It looks daunting, but it isn't. This is easy. So you're gonna go ahead and take it like this. You're gonna take your, your two thumbs, you're gonna put them in the middle of the brakes. Only on one side though, you don't wanna pull the middle. I'm sure you could if you were strong enough, but the easiest way to do it is to make sure the flat side stays on Focus on this, this is a round cylindrical thing up, up here. Go ahead, take this, and just flip it up like that. And then pull it up and over, and now it's just kind of free to come off. And that's what you're left with. So this is your pivot, and that's just a holder for the other side of the brakes. Kind of just gonna go ahead and do what we did in reverse. That flat sides on. There's one side and there's the second side. So to make sure that this actually wants to work, go up to your lever, go ahead and press that a few times and we are bingo bango. Um, we will have to turn the adjustment knobs on this back out because this wheel is going to be tight, and this is um, this is actually set for how wore those brake pads were. So we're pretty much going to do everything in reverse. Go ahead and take this bad boy, take this away, let that kind of just rest on the ground. Go ahead and get your rim, tire thing. Don't forget this. This is very important. Stick that into the right side. Go ahead and align this to take this alleyway and align it inside of this. Show it so it should sit inside itself. Take the bolt. You can go ahead and take the little bushing thing, slide that in there. Should hammer through into that. Lift this wheel up. And it pushes through to the other side. By this time, you can go ahead and take whatever you have the Navi sitting on. Pull that away. While it's on the center stand, actually sit on the bike with that axle a little bit loose. 
and force those forks into the ground. Hold that front brake, brake lever, push those forks into the ground. It will automatically line up the front wheel, everything. The fender might be a little bit off, this is a piece of plastic, but everything should line straight up. So check to see if this actually wants to free spin, lift it by the front fender. And it's flawless. All we have left is the rear brake. And to access your rear brake, you have to take your exhaust off. So it's currently like 96 degrees out right now and my camera will not stay running. So I'm gonna try to crank the rest of this video out as fast as I can. Um, fun fact, uh, Yoshimura, you're gonna have to take the whole thing off. Not exactly the whole thing, but at least the muffler assembly. Fun, little, little fun fact. So you don't have to take your entire stock exhaust off if that's what you guys are doing. Taking these two bolts off, they're marked in yellow. Obviously you're gonna have to take your fender off. Mine doesn't have the fender on it right now. Um, you can bend this exhaust out, it comes out, and then you just undo those four bolts and your wheel can just slide right through. Um, on that exhaust, again, you'd have to take your muffler out. It's just a lot easier to do that. But on this, you can actually get away with it if you pull, it, pull the muffler to the side. The whole thing should do this and you can slide that wheel to the side. So to take this rear hub off, it's just this center nut. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my half inch impact. Always as a good thing, you wanna go ahead and put something on the leverage point so this won't wanna turn and kind of just impact it off. Fitment washer that goes with this nut, do not lose that. And this hub should slide right off. So if you go ahead and look in here, it is the exact same setup as the front, which is kind of cool. All right, and the final part of all this is setting the brakes. Obviously, that's not gonna go ahead and uh, fly. So, we're gonna have to go ahead and adjust the brakes using those knobs down there. So, it's brand new brakes. I went and backed them off already. So, obviously this pedal is a friggin' sponge. So, we're gonna have to go ahead and adjust that. The rear adjustments are located right here on that arm and you just turn them in probably two turns at a time spin the wheel make sure it's not dragging on those on those shoes honda calls for a specific measurement specific pedal depth and and uh and play for the levers but i just do it how i feel so uh let's go ahead and do that so squeeze your brake lever, figure out which one of these is actually the one that pulls and isn't the one for the rear because this is conjoined braking um, that explains what this second one is. So it is the top one that does that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. It is a 14 millimeter socket. I'm going to back this in five turns. Don't worry about this one yet. This will come after you can actually back this off. 
so it doesn't affect anything. So we have a gap there, that's good. So this is touching now. So go ahead and lift up, lift it up by your fender, you're not gonna break anything. Spin that tire. So that's actually a little bit better. Maybe we could do a couple more turns in. One, two. Try to listen to see if you can hear it drag. So it drags just a fair little bit. That's normal for these bikes. You're never gonna be able to get it perfect, like I said earlier. And all you do with the other one, so take your other adjustment. Now we have a bigger gap here. Go ahead and turn your conjoined braking in until it's just barely touching. You don't want this to overpower this. In other words, you don't want the rod to be resting on the conjoined one. You want it to at least be resting on your main lever one. So that's just off. So if I go ahead and press the, the foot brake, pulls it just a little bit, so. Yeah, so we're pretty much all set. Thank you guys for sticking with me through this one. Wow, it was hot. Um, this is actually day two of this video. I started yesterday, but it just it just got so hot and humid. I couldn't take it anymore. Maybe I can try to move it to the basement. The ATVs will not fit in the basement, uh, but the Navi does, it fits through doors, even with those mirrors too. So um, yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys found it useful and helpful. Uh, spread it around to your buddies that don't know how to do their brakes. Um, I'm pretty sure this process is the same on other um, similar bikes and stuff like that. Obviously, if you have a hydraulic system, this isn't it. But um, on other scooters and stuff like that, works the same way. Um, but yeah, happy to be doing this again. Happy to get another video out to you guys. I have more creative ideas coming in the near future. Yeah, peace out for now. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. See ya.